today's essential question is how are character traits useful in writing? Our lesson objective, I can use character traits to describe my teacher. So you guys have two teachers, Ms. Terrell and Ms. James. Depending on whose class you are actually in, because you are actually in one teacher's class, whoever your specific teacher is, is the one that you are going to describe. Vocabulary, adjective and character traits. Let's think globally. These are our sparkle words. We like to call adjectives sparkle words. Crunchy is a sparkle word. The chips were salty and crunchy. People all over the world use adjectives. In China, crunchy is QQ. That's just what I think it is. If it is not that, that is okay. You might be able to find it on Google. <laughs> Here is a list of character traits that you might use to describe your teacher. We've got a whole section of nice. We've got some sad. We've got does a lot. Does very little. We've got a lot of words up there that you could use to describe your teacher. We've got our story. Think and listen to what adjectives you hear in this story. This story is called Lily's Purple Plastic Purse. Lily's Purple Plastic Purse by Kevin Hankus. Lily loved school. I love school. She loved the pointy pencils. She loved the squeaky chalk. And she loved the way her boots went clickety clickety click down the long shiny hallways. No running. Lily loved the privacy of her own desk, her very own desk. Mine. She loved the fish sticks and chocolate milk every Friday in the lunchroom. Straws make everything taste better. And most of all, she loved her teacher, Mr. Slinger. For you. Mr. Slinger was as sharp as a tack. He wore artistic shirts. He wore chains on a he wore glasses on a chain around his neck, and he wore a different colored tie for each day of the week. Listen up. Wow, said Lily. That was just about all she could say. Wow. Instead of greeting students or good morning pupils, Mr. Slinger winked and said, Howdy. He thought that desks in rows were old fashioned and boring. Do you rodents think you can handle a semicircle? And he always provided the most tasty snacks, things that were curly and crunchy and cheesy. I want to be a teacher when I grow up, said Lily. Me too, said her friends, Chester and Wilson and Victor. At home, Lily pretended to be Mr. Slinger. I am the teacher, she told her baby brother Julius. Listen up. Lily even wanted her own set of deluxe picture encyclopedias. Teachers know everything. What's with Lily? asked her mother. I thought she wanted to be a surgeon or an ambulance driver or a diva, said her father. It must be because of her new teacher, Mr. Slinger, said her mother. Wow, said her father. That was just about all he could say. Wow. Whenever the students had free time, they were permitted to go to the light bulb lab in the back of the classroom. They expressed their ideas creatively through drawing and writing. Lily went often. She had a lot of ideas. She drew pictures of Mr. Slinger and she wrote stories about him too. During sharing time, Lily showed her creations to the entire class. Wow, said Mr. Slinger. That was just about all he could say. Wow. And at the very last second, Mr. Slinger saved the cold, starving, elderly, When Mr. Slinger had bus duty, Lily stood in line even though she didn't ride the bus. Lily raised her hand more than anyone else in the class, even if she didn't know the answer. Call on me, please, please. And she volunteered to stay after school to clap erasers. I want to be a teacher when I grow up, said Lily. Excellent choice, said Mr. Slinger. One Monday morning, Lily came to school especially happy. 
She had gone shopping with her granny over the weekend. Lily had a brand new pair of movie star sunglasses, complete with glittery diamonds and a chain like Mr. Slinger's. She had three shiny quarters. And best of all, she had a brand new purple plastic purse that played a jaunty tune when it was opened. Lily wanted to show everyone. Not now, said Mr. Slinger. Listen to her story. Lily had a hard time listening. Shh. Lily really wanted to show everyone. Not now, said Mr. Slinger. Let's be considerate of our classmates. Lily had a hard time being considerate. Lice. Lily really, really wanted to show everyone. Not now, said Mr. Slinger. Wait until recess or sharing time. But Lily could not wait. She's in trouble. The glasses were so glittery, the quarters were so shiny, and the purse played such nice music, not to mention how excellent it was for storing school supplies. Look, Lily whispered fiercely. Look, everyone, look what I've got. Everyone looked, including Mr. Slinger. He was not amused. I'll just keep your things at my desk until the end of the day, said Mr. Slinger. They'll be safe there, and, and then you can take them home. Lily's stomach lurched. She felt like crying. Her glasses were gone. Her quarters were gone. Her purple plastic purse was gone. Lily longed for her purse all morning. She was even too sad to eat the snack Mr. Slinger served before recess. And that afternoon, Lily went to the light bulb lab and Still, she was still very sad. She thought and she thought and she thought, and then she became angry. She thought and she thought and she thought some more, and then she became furious. She thought and she thought and she thought a bit longer, and then she drew a picture of Mr. Slinger. Big mean Mr. Stealing Teacher. Bad. Claws. Thief. Bad. Wanted by FBI. P.S. I do not want to be a teacher when I grow up. Right before the last bell rang, Lily sneaked the drawing into Mr. Slinger's book bag. When all the students were buttoned and zipped and snapped and tied and ready to go home, Mr. Slinger strolled over to Lily and gave her purple plastic purse back. It's a beautiful purse, said Mr. Slingers. Your quarters are nice and jingly and those glasses are absolutely fabulous. You may bring them back to school as long as you don't disturb the rest of the class. I don't want to be a teacher when I grow up, Lily said as she marched out of the classroom. On the way home, Lily opened her purse. Her glasses and quarters were inside and so was a note from Mr. Slinger. It said, today was a difficult day. Tomorrow will be better. There was also a small bag of tasty snacks at the bottom of the purse. Lily's stomach lurched. She felt like crying. She felt simply awful. Lily ran all the way home and told her mother and father everything. Instead of watching her favorite cartoons, Lily decided to sit in the uncooperative chair. I'll stay here a million years for Mr. Slinger. Why does everything always happen to me? 1,051, 1,052, 1,099. And that night, Lily drew a new picture of Mr. Slinger and wrote a story about him too. Lily was really, really sorry. So everyone forgave her, even her parents, even her stinky baby brother, even her especially incredible teacher. And then the sun shined its smiley face down on everyone and everything, even the bugs and worms. The end. Listen up, I forgive everyone. Kind, good, nice, could be principal. Worms, bugs, oops. I am really, 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 really sorry. Lily's mother wrote a note 
and Lily's father bakes some tasty snacks for Lily to take to school the next day. I think Mr. Slinger will understand, said Lily's mother. I know he will, said Lily's father. How could he resist my no frills cheese balls? The next morning, Lily got to school early. These are for you, Lily said to Mr. Slinger, because I'm really, 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 really sorry. Mr. Slinger read the story, and he looked at the picture, and he read the note. What does it say? And he sampled the snacks. That was just about all he could say. Wow. What do you think we should do with this? Asked Mr. Slinger. Could we just throw it away? Asked Lily. Excellent idea, said Mr. Slinger. It's like having an extra pocket with the radio inside. Three quarters are even better than a dollar bill because they make noise. Glamorous protection from harmful rays. During sharing time, Lily demonstrated the many uses and unique qualities of her purple plastic purse, her shiny quarters, and her glittery movie star sunglasses. Then she did a little performance using them as props. It's called interpretive dance, said Lily. Mr. Slinger joined in. Wow, said the entire class. That was just about all they could say. Wow. Throughout the rest of the day, Lily's purse and quarters and sunglasses were tucked safely inside her desk. She picked at them often, but did not disturb a soul. Right before the last bell rang, Mr. Slinger served Lily's snacks to everyone's delight. What do you want to be when you grow up? Asked Mr. Slinger. A teacher, everyone responded. Lily's response was the loudest. Excellent choice. Hooray for Mr. Slinger! Delish! Wow! Goodies! Yippee! No frills! Cheese balls! As the pupils filed out of the classroom, Lily held her purple plastic purse close to her heart. Mr. Slinger was right. It had been a better day. Lily ran and skipped and hopped and flew all the way home. She was so happy. And she really did want to be a teacher when she grew up. That is, when she didn't want to be a dancer, or a, a surgeon, or an ambulance driver, or a diva, or a pilot, or a hairdresser, or a scuba diver. Accident, accident, woo woo. Hold still, the doctors are here. Ready for takeoff. The end. Okay, so now we are going to describe Lily. So I can think of a whole lot of words that would describe her at the beginning of the story and then some words that would describe her at the end. At, at the beginning, I might would say that she was a little bit mean. I don't really like to use that word to describe characters or people, but she was kind of mean. She was definitely a little silly. And then maybe at the end, she was nice. She wrote Mr. or she wrote her teacher a nice letter. She did a whole lot of nice things for him. Maybe at the beginning she was also a little bit of uncooperative. They use that word in the book. So come up with a few words to describe Lily. And then your activity for today is to you can either draw a picture of myself or Miss Jane on a sheet of paper or on your slide. You can just describe us. Your, this is the example. This is what you call an accordion. That means that as you uh, fold your, you can fold your paper and when you open it, you can see all the words. Or you can just do it on a plain sheet of paper and write the words. If you would like to do it on this slide, you can just draw a picture of one of us on this slide and write words around us that describe us. Your first part of that activity is to record your answer to the higher order thinking question. You're going to go to the microphone, you're going to 
Record your answer that, or record yourself answering the question, how can understanding character traits help you to better understand a story? And how can you 